So, uh, photography, eh? That's an interesting subject. The whole thing can be traced back to the ancient Greeks. That's where the term camera comes from, it was invented by them. By the camera obscura, which was essentially a darkened room, small hole in the wall, so that light went through. The way light's kind of concentrated into it, like a sort of funnel, but it gets projected on the wall, the, the outside landscape. But it's upside down. You see, the light, the light goes upside down. Any sort of box that, with that sort of operation, with like that sort of small perforation, could be considered a camera. Which means technically our eyeballs are a camera. They fit the definition. Hollow, in a sense, sort of box. The light hits the back and it's reflected upside down. The brain flips the image the right way around. It automatically takes what we're seeing, which would technically it should be upside down, and it flips it back around again. And I was thinking, why, why, do, why does it do that? Why did our brains evolve to flip it the right way around again? Surely, if we were born seeing things upside down, we'd get used to it, right? But it does it anyways. So let's think about this for a while, and then, you know, I figured, wait, hang on a minute. Our body, we, we can, you know, if you close your eyes, you can tell where everything is, can't you? You know, my feet there, foot there. I guess so we know where it is. Well, this comes around the right way. Our, our nerves don't flip upside down when we process them, do they? And I figured it'd take far less brain wiring to flip what our eyeballs see than to flip what all the different nerves around our bodies perceive in terms of feeling and pain and all that. Which, I guess, is why it does that. But imagine, imagine for a sec if everything was upside down. That would be, that'd be one heck of a world. But really, if we were born into that and living it, it would be kind of indistinguishable from living in modern life. Even down to the fact that we probably still call the thing that's in at the top for us, like the sky. So a skyscraper would still be called a skyscraper, even though it's dangling like a stout tie from our perspectives in that reality. Although, stalagmites would be the ones that are, that are dangling in that world. It's a crazy thought. Interesting, that is, stalagmites, stalactites. I always, I read a book, it told me to remember them like this. Stalactites hang tight to the ceiling, and stalagmites might one day grow to reach them. Interesting mnemonic, and it fixed it like uh, Richard of York gave battle in vain for rainbows. But I didn't remember it from that, actually. You might have heard of a series called Boogie Beebees, and if you haven't, then my goodness, you, you missed a lot. It was this uh, show in, in the United Kingdom, of course, because that's where I came from, on the, on the sort of the preschool channel, CBeebies. One of the presenters would like teach this choreography routine one of the episodes was this song about rainbows and they, they did it in the opposite order they, in the song they started from violet and worked their way up to red the song went something like this uh, rainbow rainbow I can see a rainbow magical rainbow in the sky do, 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 do. I because like I think they were going for a Bollywood sort of vibe and then they got to the core bit and go Violet, indigo, blue, green, yellow, orange, and red, and then we'll go back into the rainbow bin. And there might be more to the song, but I can't remember. My goodness, CBeebies. <laughs> this one fuck of a trippy channel, I'll tell you that. Like, big cook, little cook. That was one heck of a show. You know, there were two guys, Ben, the title of Big Cook, and Small, who, as his name implies, is the is the little cook. Every episode would go like this. They tell some story tale. And like one of the characters right into that story tale has come in. You never saw him, of course, because the budget was like, like fucking shoestring. And then what they'd do is they, they'd have to make a recipe based on this tale because one of the characters had gone and ordered it. But they'd always have one ingredient missing. And Small would have to go to one of the factories where that missing ingredient was made and pick up 
pick up the ingredients straight from the factory and sound like going to like fucking Tesco's or something. Well, I don't know. No, let's just what well, fight because he was tiny. He used a wooden stirring spoon as, as like a witch's broom, so he'd fly around with that. It's crazy. But why, why didn't he go to Tesco's or like Sainsbury's or something? They could have made up a supermarket because you know, like this is. I know it was a BBC thing, we're not allowed to put brands there, but... but no, they had him go to the factory, because of course, it has to be education, otherwise, it's pointless being on CBBS. They have to teach you about something, otherwise they're not allowed. There's no point in them. If there's no facts, then what's the point in the damn thing? All they did, instead, was have him go to the factory, yeah. With the, with the, so they could learn the facts. And then they'd make the damn thing, and then they'd tidy up using the same tidy up song like there was in every episode. I know pots and pans were involved or something like that. But I remember the, there was one really funny bit where the missing ingredient was apple juice. They didn't have any apple juice. And so what Ben did, he tried to crush an apple in his hands. He got apples like... It didn't work. It wasn't strong enough. He didn't go to the gym. He spent all day cooking for fucking fairy tale characters. He had to go get apple juice from the fucking apple juice factory. He didn't even know there was a special factory just for fucking apple juice. You know, I, I really go off topic. I'm supposed to be talking about cameras here. Instead, I'm going on about fucking big cook, little cook. I remember, I remember the story, it went, some guy made some silver points in a lab and he accidentally, he spilled some chemicals on them or something or he left them out in the light and he, they found he'd taken some, accidentally t developed a perfect copy of him bustling around on there. So he did some experiments and he made a camera of the points. X-rays were invented when Wilhelm uh, Röntgen accidentally spilled the wrong chemicals on his photo. Interestingly enough, Wilhelm Röntgen, he actually took proper radiation protection, which was rather unheard of in his contemporaries. You know, even Marie Curie, who worked with radiation extensively, didn't know about how dangerous it was and ended up killing us herself with all of it. Why not suicide? You know what I mean. The pinhole cameras are interesting things. Instead of like a proper lens made out of glass or something, it's literally just a fucking hole in a sheet. You know, people make pinhole lenses for modern cameras. Like, they fucking make, strap something to the lens and poke a tiny hole in it. The picture that you get from a pinhole camera, it's got infinite depth of field, and pretty much nothing is out of focus. But it takes a long time to expose, and uh, there's a lot of vignetting because, you know, the aperture is very small, yeah, the, you know, not much light can get in. There's a lot more vignetting in the old days of camera. To the point where making something black and white and putting artificial vignetting around the edges is enough to make people go, yep, it's old timey. Imagine if someone took a picture with an old day camera in the modern days and then you just got the picture and put it in like a, a storage chest full of other photos or something. So people look at it and go, whoa, it's time travelers. It's fucking epic, man. But once I was on Snopes, apparently, People saw this guy in a picture from this old idol in the 40s and assumed he was a time traveler because his outfit wouldn't have been very popular in the old days to the point where people wouldn't have even assumed it had been invented then. But it's kind of popular now. The guy, well, he had a, like, a jacket on, but underneath he was wearing a t-shirt with a printed pattern on it. He had a baseball cap and he also had more modern looking sunglasses. They weren't old timey looking ones. But all of those things were around back then. You could get printed t-shirts and baseball caps and all that fucking weird looking sunglasses. It was crazy. It just goes to show some things are a lot older than you think. And this, this is a good way to segue back into cameras. CCTV was actually invented in the 1920s. Crazy, huh? Back in the old days, like, you know, when there was analog cameras, once you've taken a picture, you have to develop it as a negative and then develop that into a positive using chemicals in something called a dark room because you couldn't have normal light with it because that's what you exposed it to. 
so you'd, you'd have to put it in small amounts of light, hence why the rooms were like used with red light bulbs. Then they then they develop it. And people usually did not have access to a dark room. They'd have to go to a photograph shop, give them their reels, and say, "Hey, hey, you, can you develop these photos for me? I've kind of run out of photo reel here. So while I'm buying a new one, you can develop these. That'll be cool. Thanks." And they go, "Oh, okay." You know, films. What they do when they're filming something on the old camera, they just took lots of pictures. Why, you know, why, and why it would uh, print it onto the analog film. So, when they edited films back in the old days, what they'd have to do was they'd have to get the reels and cut them up and take them together. They eventually developed machines to like cut them evenly. Don't know what the hell they used to tape them though. Yeah, eventually they, they started transferring things onto tape instead because it was easy. Well, the film persisted for a while. It's because it's analog. It doesn't look that blurry. And that's what all this remastered stuff usually is. It's usually an old film that's being shot on film rather than on like tape or on a computer format. When they get a f transfer a film onto digital, they basically record the film playing with a with a digital camera while using a device, and then they transfer it. So obviously back in the old days they would have done it with a blurry old fashioned camera. But nowadays they can capture what the film's playing onto like a 4K camera. And it looks a lot better. That's why, why, you know, you can watch like a repeat of Friends. And it won't look horrible and blurry, you know, it'll look crisp and clear. As if the title of Friends were right there in front of you. Sipping a hot mocha at uh, Central Perk. Friends, that was one hell of a series. It was very popular, it lasted about a decade. Crazy, it's crazy to think that it lasted a decade. You know, like the Big Bang Theory. Except that lasted for like 12 years. I used, I used to like it, but thinking back, I don't know why I liked it. I can no longer understand the appeal. I'm not gonna be pretentious and I'm like, I never enjoyed it. I did, I used to find it funny. I don't know why. But Chuck Lauren is a hack and he must be stopped. How many sitcoms has he got to make before people stop watching it? Dharma and Greg, two and a half men. The Big Bang Theory, Mike and Molly, that one with the Afghan guy, played by a South African of Indian descent. Wow, Chuck, you really know your fucking ethnicities, don't you? I did enjoy Friends for a bit. I got a little fed up with it after season eight. But I remember when Friends used to be on all the time on Channel 4. Interesting station, that is. But Friends used to be on it all the time. To the point where people would sometimes nickname it the Friends Channel. And then they lost the license to it in the UK to, to broadcast Friends. And thus, no more Friends on Channel 4. It was on Comedy Central for a while, if I do believe. And then Channel 5 picked it up, like, since when does Channel 5 fucking pick up anything? Like, for context, Channel 5 is like the loser uncle of the big five TV channels. Channel 5, useless station. Almost nothing of value. The most famous thing it spawned was Peppa Pig. And everyone hates that monstrosity. It was broadcast on Channel 5's Kids Swamps Milkshake. It hasn't got a full-fledged channel yet, unlike CBBC, which was BBC's kid blog. They got their own channel eventually, and CITV, which was ITV's kids blog, got its own channel eventually. But Milkshake, last time I checked, did not. Which is an oddity, a curiosity, that perhaps needs addressing, if Channel 5 ever had the money to do it. Unlike the other channels in the big five, BBC, BBC2, ITV, Channel 4, Channel 5, the analog ch station, oh and S4C if you're in Wales. What happened was they, they got themselves bought out by a big American company, Channel 5 did. I only wanted the big five to do that. Got bought out by fucking Viacom. Without cameras you would not be watching this right now. But what's even more interesting 
is editing. Editing is what's going to spruce this up, so it's not just some loser sitting behind a green screen. Editing is what spices the fudge together, what adds fancy background effects, what trims things, crop things, changes the colours, does all that fancy stuff. Back in the old days of film, you used to have to spice together the footage and guillotine it. It's a guillotine, isn't it? Yeah. Editing is where I'm at home, really, you know. I like making footage look wacky. It's fun. I guess you could do that even without a camera because animation exists now. And nowadays, you don't need a camera to do that. Back in the old days, though, you used to have to draw things on actual, like, thing. So I went for that be paper if you're really basic, or like cells, which are like transparent sheets of plastic with holes in them so you can swap them on a board. You used to paint them on that with ink and uh, along with a still background that was usually painted. Hence why in old Disney films the backgrounds always look way more detailed than the actual moving things. So what they used to have to do was like they'd put the cell on the background, take a picture or something called a rostrum. And that's how you can zoom into a photo, like on a Ken Burns documentary. But, and there's also you can zoom into something in an animation. They're not having to redraw everything as it gets bigger, though, which we're just physically zooming in the rostrum camera. But nowadays, you can just draw everything on the computer, you know, like with animation. You'll, although, if you want, if you want a, to do a voice, you'll still need a microphone, unless you just do everything text to speech. That'll be one heck of a film. Although, why well, there are loads of things on the internet that do that. Just animation with text-to-speech vocals. Usually, if they're trying to make it really silly, but I've seen a few serious projects, mostly creepy pasta, where people couldn't be like asked to put on a British accent, and so just got why like, that the British, the British-sounding text-to-speech from the fucking meme compilations to be like a news announcer or something like. No, well, no, it's a, the craft just really is evolving. And to be honest, just making all of this filming stuff more accessible for people to the point where now you can, like, there's a camera on most phones. So people have got a camera in their pockets all day, potentially. But nowadays, you can literally just carry a camera around so that if something crazy happens, you can just whip it out, take a picture. But back in the old days, something big going on. People, in order to like, you know, take some viral video or some, or some guy crashing on, they would have had to wheel around the big bunky thing. Don't know how a video would have gone viral in those days. I know, passing it on to all the cinemas, like, uh, this clip of a cat doing a backflip, yes, this will be all the, this will be the big hits in the cinemas. <laughs> yes, and the Nickelodeons, people will definitely pay to see this. To the earliest films in cinema did have that sort of weird vibe. It was just like videos of like train stations happening and or, or mundane things because the whole point of it was just the spectacle of seeing like an image move and everyone's like, whoa, look, it's a train. It's a train. It's moving on the screen. It's crazy. What? That can't be real. What sort of power store trickery is this? And then, of course, a magician by the name of George Melias came up with a little thing called special effects. You see, by weaving some of the the lens covered, he realised that he left blank spaces on the film reel. You could film it again using the same reel and cover up the other part, and then bam, you could be in two places at once. So special effects was born. Kind of funny, I wasn't like a professional filmmaker, but like a magician that discovered this. Magicians pushing the boundaries of technology for a while, just like the porn industry. Seriously, if you look at technology, you'll find that the early adopters are almost always of the sex industry. VHS, uh, you know, won the battle against Betamax for two reasons. One, it was longer. Four hours is just the right length to tape of an American football game. Uh, hence why over in Japan, Betamax was a bit more popular because their sports games tended to be a little bit shorter. And two, Sony was interested in keeping their reputation as a reputable company intact 
which meant no licensing it to pornographic filmmakers was no go. This is a family tape for families, for serious filmmaking, not for smut, not for filth. And JVC that made VHS, they were like, nah, mate, go on, who cares? And guess which tape won the format war? Sony made sure the next time they released a new format, they licensed it to the to the adult film industry, so to speak. Online credit card transactions, passwords on websites, uh, they were also pioneered by the porn industry. Video streaming in general was pioneered by the sex industry. And now, even now, the main the main people that were interested in VR was the sex industry. For, for, for obvious reasons. The more innovations for cameras in the future, it's probably gonna be driven mainly by the sex industry again. So this, this, this future, you know, this future we're coming into of, no pun intended, of, you know, cameras and stuff. Think about that, it's gonna be driven, once again, no pun intended, by the sex industry. But cameras really, truly are interesting devices. And I will say, I've been able to really let my creativity shine with the use of cameras, little cameras on phones. I can't afford a fancy camera, not yet. So I'm making do with these little ones. This is fun. Just rambling off in front of the camera, set to special effects and maybe fancy music, who knows. But I think that's all I've got to ramble about. I think we're done. See you next time, I guess.